Hello adventurers and welcome back to my channel. Today we are in Boulder City, Nevada and we are going to Tom Devlin's Monster Museum. This is something that I've been really excited to do while I'm in the Vegas area because this place is absolutely awesome and I've seen it on a couple videos and I had to come. So uh, Frank here is, is greeting us and um, up these stairs we go to pay our entry fee and see what other monsters are here at the Tom Devlin's Monster Museum. This is something that is totally kind of different than what we've been doing recently, but I'm really excited that we made it here and I think you're going to see why pretty soon. Okay, so we're inside guys and wow is all I can say. There are several different things right inside the lobby area before you even get into the museum that are awesome. Not to mention right now they're showing some documentaries in the theater. So I'm gonna go take a little peek. I probably can't share those with you guys because of copyright, but gives me a good idea as to what's going on. And of course I like some knowledge, so I'm gonna geek out a little bit and then I'll get back to you guys as we push through the doors and go in. But first I'm gonna show you some of the things that you can see right here before you even go inside. It's pretty awesome, including this, the actual spider body from Gremlins. And there's kind of some neat things on here about how it works too. Guys, I could literally spend a whole day just watching this. This is like the kind of stuff that I like to watch. This could be a problem. I may have to force myself to go out and just explore the museum because this is an experience in itself. Oh no! Okay, it's time for us to move into the museum itself and I am really excited because everything in this first hall is Absolutely, more than I could have even expected. And I was expecting the bar to be super high. Let me show you some of this and then we'll get back and chit chat in a minute. first room we have big big shoes to fill here it is already starting us off with a bang and it's so awesome each one of the characters has a sign that talks a little bit more about what it is that brought this particular character to life and this one is awesome this is Lon Chaney right here and of course the character is right here so as I'm kind of going through I'm able to get all of these little tidbits of what made this character come to life and then also they have some photos along with it and then that goes on for on and on and on for each and every one of them like this right here historic photo 
And then also you can see a scene from the actual production. And it talks about the person right here. So Lon Chaney was an American stage and film actor, makeup artist, and director. He went on to also be a screenwriter. He's regarded as one of the most versatile and powerful actors. And um, this was one of his most noted characters right here. Here we have The Hunchback of Notre Dame, and there were actually several other films based on this French novel before the 1923 Universal Studios version. The Phantom of the Opera, the one that Lon Chaney was so noted for, was created in 1925, and it was the largest scale silent film they had ever done. From there, it only gets more and more interesting, like this. What? We have a full-on mummy and he's right next to this guy. Does he look familiar? He certainly does to me. In fact, here we learn about Boris Karloff. Karloff was recognized as one of the most true icons of horror cinema and he was closely identified as a Frankenstein, but he actually did several other things as well. And so it's kind of neat to see this guy along with this and then the creature from the black lagoon right here this is actually the gill man from the creature from the black lagoon from 1954 and we saw frank outside but this is the frank inside the actual one that is modeled off of jack pierce jack pierce was actually a legendary monster maker who worked in the 1930s and 40s and here you can actually see pierce doing some of the applications for some of the characters that we have grown to love over the years in the horror genre. After seeing that application, it is no doubt that this next one right here looks a little familiar from that. This is actually Lon Chaney Jr. And it was an American actor who was known for playing the iconic role of Larry Talbot from The Wolfman. And it's hard for you guys to see this, but when you look at this character, he almost has like a slick appearance to him. It's very fascinating. I have always liked scary movies. However, I never thought that I would walk through a hall of scary movies like this because around every corner, there's something waiting to be discovered. Uh, Herman Munster. Munsters were considered to be the first family of fright and they had an American sitcom that depicted the home life of the family of monsters. It actually starred Fred Gwynn as Herman Munster. And then also you see here, little Eddie Munster, and he was played by Butch Patrick. And just to kind of give you an idea of what this little family looked like, this is an actual photo. And then of course we know the Munsters mobile. Uh, they have one of these on display at one of the car museums also, which I think is kind of cool. I watched a special about Fred Gwynn specifically, and it said that at one point in time, the physicality of his costume was just so overwhelming that he would be drenched in sweat and almost lethargic after each shoot. And it was just very, very hard. And you can see why when you see the stature of the mannequin here even, despite the fact that he has the platform shoes, he has a very boxy shoulder and a very large headpiece. Again, this is kind of like what, what you could have expected to see him having to wear every single day. It was said that this was super, super weighty. The documentary that I was watching was actually about Planet of the Apes and how the prosthetics would have to be applied to each one of the actors. It was kind of interesting to note that they would try to eat in these and food would physically get stuck in the prosthetics. So at one point they actually had to switch over to milkshakes so that they could be able to consume food on set. They could use straws and that was much more efficient. The man who was in charge of this was actually John Chambers. You can see here him applying some of the prosthetics for that. I'm not, not okay with this next one. This next one is the thing of nightmares. The next one is the exorcist. Dick Smith was actually responsible for The Exorcist. He was a self-taught special effects makeup artist nicknamed the Godfather of Makeup and you can see him at work there. He actually did the practical special effects beginning with The Exorcist in 1973. So garners a pretty special title. He actually has not one but two Academy Awards which is something no other special effects makeup artist has been able to achieve. So that's pretty cool but this is creepy. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna cringe a little bit now. I'm just gonna walk away. Ugh. 
As I told you, we were gonna discuss a little bit more. Tom Devlin, the man on the sign. Why is he so important? Who is he? What has he done? Well, he was actually known and still is known as the king of the bees. He loves a good bee movie and finds a good challenge in creating some of the most unique and interesting monsters of all times. He actually got his start in a kind of different way though. Devlin actually started out as mainstream Hollywood. He worked on the X-Files, he worked on Scorpion King, he actually did several other things including Terminator, and then he started playing a little bit more with his imagination, and B-movies gave him an opportunity to expand on those a little. And what we're seeing in front of us are some of those works. This is Killjoy, and this is one of Tom Devlin's creations. They actually have several different sequels of this, and this entire area is filled with unique pieces designed by Devlin. Some of these are actually screen used. Then there is Poultrygeist. Poultrygeist is a very interesting, interesting thing as you can see. This is actually the general chicken monster. And then you have a couple of masks right here also. And then as we go down, there's actually a screen used shirt down here also. And of course, along the way, we're seeing all of these different photos of Devlin and doing some of his work. It's kind of interesting. In addition to some B-movies, he's also worked on some pretty large mainstream kind of horror movies. Um, have you ever seen Freak Show? I have. I would consider that one to be a little bit more mainstream. It had lots of press, lots of things going on, and he definitely worked on that one in addition to several others. But these are some of the crazy creatures that he envisioned. This next one gave me absolute nightmares because I had dolls in my house. You're, you'll see why. Puppet Master. Yeah, you remember Puppet Master. And if you don't, these things should ring a bell. Or maybe these. I just want to share the attention to detail in this. Look at this. His mouth physically looks like it is dripping wet. Oh, wow. And that is actually from Ghoulies 2. And you can see here there is an actual autographed poster that Tom Devlin has signed right by the creepy crawler guy down in the toilet. Killer clowns from outer space. We're just gonna walk away from the creepy crawly clowns, but not too far because there are people without faces over here too. In fact, these are the faceless wonders from They Live. This was a 1988 film that was directed by John Carpenter and it starred Rowdy Roddy Piper from the WWE. And these characters look moist to say the least, like their skin has freshly peeled from their faces. Did you ever watch The Toxic Avenger, the 1991 comic book series from Marvel? Well, um, yeah. His face looks like it's physically sloughing off. Oh, wow. Interestingly enough, there are actually three sequels to this movie and you can find some of the posters kind of around this display right here. Very interesting. It's pointing us toward the exit, but to exit we have to go through the Hall of Horrors itself. Some of the scariest and most known monsters of all times. Halloween had the lowest budget probably ever when it came to music but one of the most iconic scores. And it's one of those that when you hear it, you know it, 
and you know that something bad is about to happen. I, I hear that every time in my head now, going forward, whenever I think of a scary movie. But the music wasn't the costume. The costume we're looking at, absolutely intimidating. In fact, every so often you have a movie character which transcends even what the directors could have thought. And because of the iconic nature of this particular mask, there were people cringing even today with the multiple sequels. It's just very daunting, very intimidating. But this is just the beginning of the most iconic of icons when it comes to horror. It only gets more weird from here, guys. Who will survive and what will be left of them? The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Well, there he is. There he is. Now maybe the reason this one is very scary is because it's urban legend that everyone has heard of a story of where it could have taken place somewhere in Texas. But in reality, Leatherface was actually based off of Ed Gein. That may sound familiar to you. It should, he was a serial killer. Everyone has also seen this guy and the numerous sequels. This is Leprechaun. Did you know that Jennifer Aniston actually got her start? on the very set of this movie. Yeah, it went on to have five different sequels. And the man who actually played the Leprechaun was also known for his roles in many other movies that you have seen. For example, Willow, Return of the Jedi, and even Harry Potter. In fact, Warwick Davis and his performance in this was very interesting because it was a horror, but it also was a little bit funny. It was a kind of interesting genre and People really grasped onto this one. And at the same time, we're fearful. I, I remember watching this whenever I was younger and thinking, oh my gosh, this is so scary. And now I watch it and I get the humor a little bit more. What about Ash from Evil Dead? Who hasn't seen this one? This one was pretty epic also. So as Evil Dead 2 was a sequel of Evil Dead 1, which was a 1981 movie and also took some nods from Army of Darkness, this one was a little bit different. What about Critters? Critters was one of those really bizarre movies that when you watch it, it's, it's a little strange, but it has these little critters like this guy right here. And it was a 1986 film. Follow this one, it's, it's borderline sci-fi. These were little weird critters who made it to Earth and they were trying to evade shape-shifting aliens. But at the same time, they, they weren't good guys. They, they weren't the good guys. And then there's this guy, despite his box saying, good guys, he wants you for a best friend. Modeled after the My Buddy dolls, he was not my buddy. In fact, Chucky was a possessed doll. And Chucky went on to do some very naughty things and was not a good buddy at all. This was a 1988 movie that became so popular that there's been numerous sequels of it as well. And now people have little Chuckies in their home as collector's items. I could never, I could never. It seems innocent enough to go to a summer camp. Today we're going to Camp Crystal Lake. It sounds like a peaceful place, or is it? Well, it might have been, but you know, some really bad stuff happened and then it kind of went even worse and then it got worse than that. And then eventually we ended up with this guy. Friday the 13th has never been very settling for me as a nomad. I travel to a lot of beautiful places and in the back of my head, I think of this guy, always this guy. He has many different forms, all of which have a ski mask and usually some kind of very large machete. But yeah, this guy. Now, I have watched many, many specials about this guy, that guy, these guys. And one of the things that always surprises me is how this particular movie took the turn that it did. It started out very different than what it became. And it's really crazy to see how they made it from point A to point B. But wow, talk about iconic, definitely iconic. And then there's the man who made all of us not want to ever sleep again. 
One, two, Freddy's coming for you. Three, four, better lock your doors. Yeah, that guy. That guy. In fact, at the time that this movie began, it launched a lot of people into the atmosphere of not only this genre, but just in general. Um, Wes Craven, for example, that name sounds super familiar now, but at the time that he started out with this, not so much. And this movie has outlived so many of the expectations that they initially had. It is wild. But again, we're here about the special effects makeup and look at how this application technique went on. You could see that right here, Robert England looks like just a normal everyday guy walking down the street. And by the time that he's finished, he turns into this crazy looking monster of a man. And this crazy monster of a man lives in all of our memories as the one reason that we dread nighttime. And with one room remaining before we exit through the gift shop, one of my favorites and a couple of others. Say it with me three times. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Kind of an interesting story about this one. This used to be one of my favorite movies when I was a kid because I just thought it was really, really cool. Don't know why, but I did. And um, I remember sitting down and saying I wanted to watch this movie and my grandma was going to watch it with me and just, no, it didn't go well. But uh, Beetlejuice was epic. From these hands, can you tell that this is one of the most iconic zombie characters of all times? This was actually created in 1985 for Return of the Living Dead. This is Tar Man. Now, I know Tim Curry for several different things. And one of my favorite is actually a, a witch movie that he was in like a bazillion years ago that's like a super kid-friendly movie. But also, he was in some pretty big other things like Rocky Horror Picture Show. And he single-handedly changed the way that people viewed clowns. Tim Curry was the original It. Monster Museum without Creep Show. Now, Creep Show actually came out in 1982, the year that I was born. So you wouldn't think that I would have seen it. Oh, but I have. Oh, but I have. And Creep Show, it, it lives up to its name. Very creepy. Very good. And I want to say that if they came out with a Creep Show now, I, I would be down for that. I would definitely be down for that. Now, Creepshow is most known for Tom Savini doing the makeup for all of that. And if you're interested in finding out a little bit more about him, there's another channel here on YouTube that I definitely encourage you to go and check out because they actually went and toured his home and interviewed him. That is the Grim Life Collective. They are just really, really good. And they have the best interview of Tom Savini like ever. And with that being said, it is time for us to exit Tom Devlin's Monster Museum through the gift shop. Okay guys, so I hope you can see why coming out to a place like this is absolutely amazing. There's so much knowledge to be had and there's so much attention to each and every one of those artists. Now whenever I was leaving out, even the man who was taking cash at the front and taking care of everything in the shop, he is a sculptor. It was fabulous to see his work on display and also him actually physically doing some of that. It really inspired me to want to go out and learn how to do that as well. Because look at all of the awesome things that people have created. Now a little bit more information on Tom Devlin before I close out this video. Tom Devlin is a very talented, amazing artist when it comes to monster makeup. He has a lot of skill, obviously, but he's also been recognized on a few things that you may have a little bit more access to seeing other than the movies themselves. That way you can see physically him doing the process. If you watch the reruns of the show Face Off, he actually was a part of that and you can physically go see some of his work and I think that that's fabulous. I definitely encourage you guys to get out and do that and if you've enjoyed coming along with me today to the Tom Devlin Monster Museum, 
make sure that you leave a thumbs up hit the subscribe button and check out future content I'm gonna be playing in this area for a little bit and I have some other cool things that I think you're going to enjoy seeing remember guys we are not here for a long time but we are here for a good time and places like this make that easy till next time guys bye